from Dallas, Texas. Welcome to This Week at Champion, hosted by Elvis Anderson and Anthony Manzo. Hi from Champion Equipment Finance Headquarters in Dallas, Texas. Today is Friday, September 15th. This is This Week at Champion. I'm Elvis Anderson alongside Anthony Manzo with today's top story. Elvis? Yes, Anthony. This week, we have been celebrating Trucker Appreciation Week all week. We have. And this really is meant to celebrate the hardworking and pivotal job of truckers in our country. Yes, for sure. Now, unfortunately, as the saying goes, Houston, we have a problem. There is, at this point, historically low trucker employment in this country. That's right true. now, according to a recent study, more than 80,000 drivers are needed to make up the shortfall in truckers in the U.S. right now. And according to additional data, this doesn't look like the problem is ever going to go, is going away anytime soon. As a matter of fact, we're looking at 160,000 truck drivers short by the year 2030. Now, that being said, you wonder why. I mean, we see it every day, how, what a great job it is to be a trucker. So yeah. I kind of put together a couple little things. If someone has an interest in maybe a career in trucking, yeah. there are a couple things you should know yes. that you should consider before you make that jump. Uh, the first thing here is there's two different types of truckers. Most right. people think that truckers are on the road right. for two, three, four weeks and they're never home to their family. That's not necessarily true. Not there are two them. different types of truckers. You know, you have over-the-road truckers. Yes, sure. those are ones who can be gone for two days, five days, five weeks. Sure. They are driving from coast to coast, yep. north to south, diagonally, whatever. But there are also short-haul or local truckers. And those people are more like the nine-to-five type of trucker, though maybe like six to nine, but they're home every night with their families, okay? And, and that, you know, so there's whatever you want to do in your life, whatever suits your lifestyle, you have some options there. The other part, too, is there is a lifestyle associated with the over-the-road trucking. Yeah. And you get to see the country. The, I mean, you know, who gets to say that they can drive to all 50 states or 40? Yeah. Well, you can't drive to all 50. 49, not 50. But, you know, but you can, you know, literally see 49 of the states. It can be an amazing experience, especially yeah. we know how many pairs of, of, truck, of, of married truckers do we know where they're sure. both driving or That's at least right. one's there. They're pairing up. Uh, which is an um, amazing opportunity the dog for a lot of too. families. With the dog, too. And, of course, look, there are, again, two different types when we talk about categories. There yeah. are truckers who are what you call like owner-operators, yeah. or there are company drivers. Yes. Now, a company driver, very simply put, is someone who works for an employer, like yeah. you or I. Sure. Right? We are company spokespeople, yep. or whatever we are. Right. And... You know, you will, you know, they supply your truck, they supply your insurance, they supply yep. your gas money, and everything is there. You just get behind the wheel and drive. However, you are limited in the income that you can make. Typically, less than $1 per mile is what you're going to get paid as a company driver. And if you decide to be an owner operator, you could 5, 6, or 7x that earnings. But there's also going to be more expenses with that as well, Elvis. So you're going to have to worry about, number one, buying your own truck, paying for your own gas. Yep. All, you know, all of your logic, that's going to be, have, you're going to have to factor that in, your insurance as well. You're going to have to factor that in. Yeah. So look, regardless of you think trucking may be a career or not for you, it is an amazing career to have, and it can be very lucrative, as we also discussed with the UPS contract that just came out a few weeks ago. Yeah. So look, guys, ladies, everyone else, think about it. Could have a great career. Uh, so it certainly is an option. Uh, fantastic. Thank you for that, Mr. Manzo. Keep it in moving. Let's go into story number two. A uh, story close to home, right up the road in Denton, Texas. Oh, yes. One of, if not the most iconic brands in transportation, Peterbilt. That's where they the make Pete. their trucks. They make their trucks up in Denton. And uh, last week. Where's Denton for all the viewers at home? Just north of Dallas. And by the way, it's a fantastic little little college town, University yeah. of North Texas is there. They yeah. have a great meta, a great music school, which uh, means there's a lot of good live music and a lot of cool little craft breweries. It's a fantastic place. Highly recommend yeah. you checking that out. But last week at the Peterbilt factory, uh, the good folks up there celebrated their 100,000th 
Model 389 to come off the line. 100,000 100, of these iconic trucks they've made. Uh, this truck was introduced back in 2006, so let's do the quick math. It's taken them 20, 17 years, 17 years to, to make 100,000 of them. And uh, so I've got a quote here. From Jason Skoog, the, uh, this is what he had to say. We are extremely pleased to present the 100,000th Model 389 to Massey Fr uh, Motor Freight. I said Jason Skoog, Peter Massey, Built General uh, Manager. Uh, Troy Massey is a longtime Peterbilt customer who recognizes the craftsmanship, performance, and durability of the Model 389 and is the perfect customer to receive this milestone truck. Congratulations to you, uh, Mr. Massey. Yes, absolutely. And, and to Peterbilt as well, to that's, both of you. That's right. That's well a, done. The, uh, well done. Congrats all around. But the, the 389 it will not be made. Uh, it's going to phase this. Uh, this historic production run will end yes. at, at the end of this year. Yes. And uh, they're going to uh, replace the 389 with the legendary uh, 589. Okay, so nice a little bit of change. Uh, but, uh, hey, there's one, yeah. there's one constant, and that's Peterbilt is cranking out beautiful, durable, reliable trucks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keeping it moving, let's, moving we don't forward. stop for nothing. Let's get no. into the weekend the sports, sports report. report. College football is moving. It's fast. It's going. Things are happening. Uh, my Seminoles are number three. Miami Hurricanes are playing football. We don't have a lot of big games this no. weekend. No, uh, no we've not got a lot of big but games. one that always has my attention every year. It's the old saying, you know, uh, keep a keep a, a close eye on your friends and a closer eye on your enemies, right? So I don't. I watch the Florida Gators and they are hosting Tennessee. So I will have my uh, Tennessee Vault Orange on tomorrow. Wow! And then tomorrow night. Hey, man, you, there's nothing you can say. Primetime, Neon Deion Sanders looks back. to go to 3-0 and oh as they host uh, Colorado State. In an interstate rivalry. That's an right. In the rivalry. battle for Colorado. Yes. We've got, and then on Sunday, we have uh, the uh, Jets at the Dallas Cowboys, Cowboys right up there at Jerry, Jerry World. And then Dolphins at Patriots yeah. will be a good football game either. We have a little bit of uh, F1 action happening. Little F1, you I, seem again, to know just, something about. Uh, you know, we are looking at after uh, two weeks ago in Monza, Italy, where Max Verstappen broke the all-time record for consecutive races. He's going for 11 consecutive wins in a row. Now, just to put this in perspective, <laughs> crazy. these cars, like, it, it, there, are, there are failures, accidents in every one of these races. To see one person so dominant is, is almost unbelievable. I mean, it, it's just... To, you're gonna, he's gonna, and you know, the only thing that can stop him is literally the hand of God has to come down and just like push his car off the track at this point. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. And uh, we've got the uh, the Cowboys report. Yeah. What's happening with the Dallas Cowboys? Well, you so know, people want to know. We have some good news. Our must win game, we absolutely won. <laughs> That's right. Won that I mean, we had that week one must win game, turned out to be a big winner, 40 yeah, to nothing. Yeah. Defense, wow, better than even I, I expected. Yeah. Offense still needs a little bit of work, yeah. but you know we're going. And, and, and this might this is the week where we really find out how good or bad the offense could be because yeah. the Jets they have a good <laughs> defense. They have a very good. They have defense. a very good defense. So like, but we're going to look at that. We're playing our first home game of the year. I do expect to win. Um, got a couple of little nagging injuries on yep. the O line. Yep. Uh, new receiver. You know. We, but uh, I think we're going to be okay. And, I think we're going to be okay. Uh, six, I'm predicting a win. He, he, she's predicting a win. And predicting here's somebody win. else who has uh, predicting some win and needs some wins. Let's go to Max Betts. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Max Betts checking in from a 3-1 weekend. Told you follow. We're going to hit. All right. So to keep this good luck streak going, I got my ticket friend. We have four more plays today. He's going to help me out with the NFL. College football, I can take care of. So we're going to start the week off with Penn State. Minus 14 versus Illinois. Altmaier, terrible quarterback. Got to fade him. It, it's a win. Second, we're going to go to the Swamp in Florida. Not picking the Gators. We're going Tennessee. Minus six and a half. Who's going to win the NFL? We're going with Cowboys. Minus nine and a half. And Green Bay. Plus one and a half. And Atlanta. Lock it in. 
Max Betts, I'll see you next week to see how we did. Thank you. Wow, Max Betts. Every week with another surprise. And I was a little hard on Max Betts. You know, he's, he's around, he was 3-1 and one last week, folks. Okay, yep. let's see what Better happens. Redeeming. He's Better got some, uh, some incredible picks. Let's see if he can stay on the heater. Uh, somebody else who is incredible in the world of sports is Lionel Messi, and this guy knows all about him. His name is Jose Salazar, so let's go to the Messi Minuto. What do you got, Jose? Buenas tardes amigos, un día más con Messi Minuto. Hoy venimos con un dato importante de los últimos 15 días que tendrá Messi. Tendrá cuatro partidos, tres de ellos de la MLS, que serán bastante importantes para poder calificar a los playoffs de la liga. Y por último tendrá un cuarto partido que es la final del US League de Estados Unidos, la cual sería su segundo título como jugador del Inter de Miami. Esperamos nos sigan viendo para más minutos importantes sobre Messi. Tengan buen tarde. Oh, man. Always good I, stuff. Always good stuff from Jose. It just, it just gets better and better. Yeah, better and better every week. Every week. You think he's done it, and then he does it again. I mean, he's like Messi. You know? Yeah, he's, he's, like, he's, like, he's like the Messi of when the Messi minute. When you think you've Messi. seen it all, he does something else. It's just even more incredible. Than Unbelievable. 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 Uh, another something else. Everybody loves. This is uh, my mom's favorite segment. Yes. Let's get into the foodie focus. focus. This one's all you, Mr. Manzo. Well, thank you, sir. Just you know, so I want to... Keep it in our home state. And again, in the theme of National Truckers Appreciation Week. Yes. We want to talk about a a very truck-friendly yes. roadside restaurant. Mm -hmm. Because again, you know, when you have the long-haul truckers, over-the-road truckers, they're on the road sometimes for weeks at a time. Yep. They need a good place where they can sit down, relax. And they need a 72-ounce steak. They need a 72-ounce steak. And where are you going to find that? No place other than Texas. However, specifically the big Texan Steak Ranch and Brewery in Amarillo, Texas. Okay, this place has everything. A brewery, they've got hotels, Correct. they've got a 72 ounce steak challenge. This place is amazing. People Correct. come from all over the country, yeah. so you have such a great iconic mix of people there. Yep. The food is amazing. The 72 ounce steak challenge, I've actually seen it a few times. Yep. Uh, people try and take it on, on on the food channels. It's unbelievable. I can't do it. Take me about a week and a half. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'd like to give it a shot one day. Yeah. So let me tell you something. Yep. Route 40, Amarillo, Texas. Let's yep. let's <laughs> head out there. Only man. in America. Only, only in America. In Texas. Only in Texas. Hey, in on the on the way out, man. So let's throw a little shout to uh, Monica for the yeah. uh, mo morning Joe with morning Mo. Joe. Morning Joe with Mo. A new segment we've been mo running on our channel. Monica in operations. She happens also to be all. She's incredible in operations, but she's also a very good barista. So she's making good coffee. So check. Check that out. That's all we have we got, from uh, headquarters in Dallas, Texas. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. We Thanks for watching.